most of New Zealand's native timber trees, such as this rimu, grow very slowly. These white pine are probably 300 years old. But most introduced conifers, like these Douglas fir, grow very quickly. This stand of larch, for example, is 54 years old. And these mature radiata pine are 49 years old. Because of their fast growth and desirable timber, the New Zealand Forest Service and private companies have planted thousands of acres of introduced species mainly radiata pine. However, it still takes many years of work and a big financial investment to grow radiata pine to marketable size. Many operations are necessary to grow trees on a large scale. First, seed is sown in nursery beds. And the beds are sprayed to control weeds, insects and fungal diseases. After one year in the nursery, the seedlings are planted out on the forest site. When six years old, the trees are first pruned to remove unwanted branches. And later, the stands are thinned to encourage rapid diameter growth on fewer but better trees. When the trees have reached marketable size, they're felled, cut into standard length logs and extracted from the forest. The logs are used for sawn timber or paper for domestic use or export. And now, logs are also being exported to Japan. Like any other crop, trees must be properly managed. Timber quality can be improved by silvicultural methods like pruning and thinning and by selective breeding. Stock breeders and horticulturalists know that breeding from selected parents will improve yield and quality. Years of selective breeding from wild strawberries like these has produced large, high quality fruit. And in the same way, selective breeding from the wild rose has produced the beautiful rose we know today. The first step in growing better trees is to find the species which will grow best on the site. This may be at sea level, or in the high country, or on the volcanic plateau. The second step is to find the best geographic seed source of the selected species. The vital importance of getting the right species and seed source is shown by comparing on the left this healthy Californian ponderosa pine with this radiata and with this miserable ponderosa from Canada. All were planted at the same time. Here is another example of the importance of finding the correct seed source. This model of the west coast of the United States shows three origins of contorta pine. A was at 8,000 feet, B was at 2,000 feet, and C was at sea level. Seed from these three origins was planted here at the same time. The high altitude source, A, grew to only three feet whereas the mid-altitude source, B, grew to 12 feet. And C, from sea level, grew to 18 feet. plantations, there are trees of many different shapes. This one, for example, 
contain some trees which are forked, crooked, or have very big branches, as well as other trees which are straight. What points does a tree breeder look for when he's selecting trees? These trees have been chosen to illustrate bad qualities, such as twisted and curved stems, forks, and big branches. All these features will produce poor quality timber and far too much waste. As a complete contrast, this tree is a very good one. It has a perfectly straight stem, no forks, and small flat angled branches. Logs from this tree will be easier to handle and when sawn will produce straight grain timber with small knots. Trees with curved or crooked stems like these are expensive to handle and saw and will not produce straight grain timber. In extreme cases, the grain may be so distorted that the timber is useless. This tree has many big steep angled branches, each of which will produce a large knot in the timber. The bigger the branch, the bigger the knot. A big, steep angled branch like this will cause a serious defect in the timber. In extreme cases, it can so weaken framing timber that it will break easily. So the tree breeder looks for a tree with small, flat angled branches like this. Small branches produce only small knots. Cones on the stem, as opposed to cones on the branches, also cause timber defects. Trees with many cones low down on the stem are rejected because the cones cause holes to the center of the tree, which spoils the surface of the board. The one inch board on the right is of good quality, whereas the two boards on the left show many defects, such as spike knots and big bark case knots. The two pieces of 4x2 framing on the left show several defects, such as knots and cross grain. It is the tree breeder's aim to reduce or eliminate all these defects. Trees for breeding are selected by teams of trained technicians supervised by a tree breeder. The forest is divided into small blocks which are searched systematically to find the best tree. Most trees are rejected at first glance. Very few have the qualities required for breeding purposes. One of the group examines and rejects this tree because it has a crooked stem and many big branches. He continues his search and eventually finds a tree which appears to have all the qualities he's looking for. He examines it closely, noting its straight stem and good branching. He then calls the other members of the group together. They each examine the tree and confirm that it is the best in the block. The tree is marked so that it can be identified easily and given a number which is painted on the stem. The number of the tree and its location are then recorded. When a number of high quality trees have been located, each tree is climbed to collect cones and material for grafting and propagation by cuttings. Ladders are used to enable the climber to reach the branches. Mm -hmm. 
A bag is sent up to the climber for him to collect the cones and propagating material from the top of the tree. Samples of wood are also taken from each selected tree using an increment borer. Strips prepared from these samples are examined for wood density using a beta ray densitometer. The density is recorded automatically on a chart. The wood is also examined for fibre length to assess its suitability for paper making. Seeds from cones collected by climbing the selected trees are grown in the nursery. The growth and form of these progeny is ultimately the best test of the breeding value of their selected parents. Alternatively, flowers on these grafts of the selected trees may be pollinated with pollen from other select trees and the resulting seed sown in the nursery. The controlled or wind-pollinated offspring of the selected trees are then planted out in large-scale progeny tests and their growth and form are compared at different ages to find the best offspring and thus the best parents. This progeny test is now 11 years old. On the left is a row of control pollinated progeny of two selected parents. And on the right is a row of trees of unselected parents. The offspring of selected parents have grown far straighter and faster than the unselected stock. The selected trees are normally propagated by grafting. The material collected during climbing operations is grafted onto seedlings in the nursery. The grafts remain in the nursery for one year and are then planted out in seed orchards, like this one at Guevas in the North Island. These seed orchards have been established with grafts of the selected parents so that they may mate together and mass produce high quality seed. The cones are collected from the seed orchards and sent to extraction plants from which the seeds are sent to many parts of New Zealand. The collector here is using a tool designed in New Zealand for quick and efficient collection. Another method of mass propagating selected trees is by cuttings. In young trees, vigorous healthy shoots are simply removed from the tree. These shoots are then cut to size and prepared for setting out in nurseries. Older trees, however, require a different technique because these cuttings are difficult to root. The shoots must be ring barked six inches from the tip. The ring bark is covered with foil to stop it drying out.
After about six weeks, a callus forms and the cutting is removed from the tree. Cuttings of both types are set out in nursery beds in the late autumn. They stay dormant through the winter and start root growth in early summer. Later, they're root pruned to produce a vigorous root system. The first root pruning is done with these vertical blades to cut side roots. The cuttings are then root pruned horizontally at fortnightly intervals to cut the tap roots. By early winter, they have formed a strong, healthy root system which will withstand the stresses of planting out. The aim of all these activities is to ensure that the forests of the future produce high quality wood and more of it quickly and cheaply. This is done by selecting superior trees, testing their progeny, mass producing high quality seed and mass propagating by rooted cuttings. Every year, about 50,000 acres of new forests are planted in New Zealand. Any improvement in wood quality, however small, will increase the profit of this ever-expanding industry.